Namaste and welcome to React Pets. I know it's been a while since I made a video, but I was not gonna miss this. This is my first video for 2022 and it's within awesome news that AppRite had just released 0.12. I already made a demo video about this before when it was still in alpha, but it's now official and it's released. This is awesome. This is one of my most anticipated release that I have been waiting for a long time because this release brings database on steroids and that's the new awesome database that we have built on AppRite. It's more flexible, improved internal data structures, internal working and lots of improvement around performance. You'll surely hear about the performance and benchmarking uh, in upcoming posts, probably from official posts as well. But working with AppRite has just got a lot better in terms of database. This version does introduce some breaking changes, including a custom ID support. And yet we have released it is released with backward compatibility in mind with request and response filters and all those things. But before you migrate your production project, make sure to test that your previous version users from your previous version get what they need just to be sure. There is also a migration blog post coupled with this release because database had some changes that upon migration modifies your attributes in certain ways. Some of the previous types are gone like markdown and nested documents. All those things are gone. So you have to be careful. Read this migration post. If you are using AppRight previous version and want to migrate, do read these breaking changes and how you can migrate properly. Next awesome feature of this release is the pagination. Apart from the offset pagination, limit and offset pagination, AppRite has now introduced a cursor based pagination that allows you to get documents before and after the document ID. So you pass a document ID and you try to get a document before and document after that. So using before and after pagination, it's lot scalable, lot faster for large data sets and limit and offset pagination is still there, but it is only supported up to 5,000 documents. After that, you must use after pagination or cursor pagination with before and after cursors. Next change is the permission. I'll show that in a demo in a bit. So one important thing to remember there is before for wildcard permission, we used asterisk. Right now it's changed or switched to roll colon all. It's a bit more understandable, readable instead of asterisk. And there are now collection level and document level permissions. So permissions previously was a bit difficult to understand. Now it's much more flexible to configure. And dashboard has gotten awesome. There are some usage charts, new usage charts everywhere. You can see charts everywhere. That's, that's something awesome. And custom ID support you can see here for projects and for functions and all those things. Also, you now have the service configuration. So you can disable certain API service or certain service in your app, right? Project. So you can disable service project wise so that no one can access it. If you don't use a particular service, you can just disable it just to make it more secure and error loggers. So now you can configure logging error logging. So your app write log error logs, you can send it to Sentry, Raygun, app signals and other providers. And you can learn more about official release notes, change log. This is the migration post. Make sure to go through it because you have to do some upgrades, certain attributes are done. Uh, you'll even get a notice while you are upgrading your app right version. But yeah, that's it. Before I move to demo, let's see what 
things have been introduced on version 0.12 which has completely rewritten database service and this is a breaking change collection previously rules now attributes filters have been replaced replaced with new syntax oh okay yeah filter is another thing that got upgraded and it has new awesome syntax and with all the sdks there is a class query class that helps you build filters easily indexes now you have to create indexes in order to perform query uh, to make queries more performant and queries will not work without indexes then there are enum attributes and some other changes custom ids to these resources so wildcard permission is switched from asterisk to roll all and collections can be enabled and disabled so if you want to prevent anyone from accessing collection you can just disable it so that no one can access data from that collection and permissions are found as top level keys so previously there was dollar permissions which has read and write but now we directly get dollar read and dollar write dollar permissions is removed and bunch of other changes cursor based pagination even some fixes okay bug fixes some security updates all these things now let's get to our console first when we go to create project now we have an option to set project id now we can set our own id and let's call this upright 012 and i can name this 012 demo and hit create this will create my project now let's go to database so this is the focus of this release so add a collection again we have a collection id let me call this my collection let me name this my collection collection gets created so i can set to enabled and disable i can disable the collection so that no one can add data or receive read data from this collection let's enable it and talking about permission previously if you wanted to write a document inside a collection you needed the collection permission write permission in the collection right and if you wanted to read a document from a collection you needed read permission on both the collection and document and it was somewhat confusing now new permission model is introduced where you can set the permission either to document level or to collection level how it works is when you set the permission to document level you don't need to set any permission in your collection and each document must, must have a permission information for users to be able to access it another is collection level permission when you set a collection level permission all the documents inside the collection inherit this permission that means if a user has read permission to collection in a collection level permission then he can read all the documents inside that collection and if you have set any permission in the document it is ignored when permission level is set to the collection so it's just ignored when you set permission to document level collection level permissions are ignored when you set permission to collection level document permissions are ignored now let's go to attributes previously these were calls called rules now it's called attributes and we have some new attributes and some old ones are missing so like we had a numeric attribute previously now we have float and integer attributes and thing to remember during migration is that all your numeric attributes will be converted to float because float supports both integer and float so if you had some integer values that will also be converted to float field and then we have some new attributes like enum attributes and ip attribute and nested documents markdown are removed nested document is removed due to performance issues and markdown is not really required you can have those in string attribute and when you are adding attribute now again it has like all the previous options and some more options like attribute id so previously we had rule level and key we don't need it anymore we just need attribute id or key 
and then size required array and default value all of these were available before as well and based on attribute types we have different options like now we can have enums and we can set different elements for that enum and what else we can have like url uh, with url validation we can have email email validation ip with ip address validation and all these attributes like integer and float attributes have minimum and maximum values configurable all these things are now possible and now we have index where we can add create index from different attribute let me add some attribute title size 256 255 required okay added integer here let's just make it required minimum zero maximum let's make it 999 integer now if i go to indexes i can add index again index there are three index key unique and full text so for title i want full text index because i want to be able to search I added the index now once I add the index only then I can run search query on title field otherwise I can't and if you want to filter by any field you need to add these key index and if you have some unique value if I add an attribute for let's say email add an not URL let's add an email attribute let's make it required create and here I can add index email unique let me select unique and create so now email will will be unique so if i try to insert duplicate this index will prevent me from doing that and that's that's some awesome features and there is also activity log and then some usage charts uses are only counted when you are using it when you are making requests from sdks not from console and again back to setting we have collection id we can view json now rules are attributes there we have new permission level new enabled all these things right so this is the new database and add document we have again similar thing like before we can add new document and here again we can add our own custom id and add our own values if we don't want we can set it to auto generate back to stories no changes here apart from this uses and then while adding file again you can have a custom id users again custom id support apart from that no major change team again custom id support apart from that no other major changes settings we had this already uses again this chart that you can see when you make requests from SDKs functions again custom ID support if we go to home settings there is this services tab from where you can disable services like if I want I want I can disable avatar service so no one can access the avatars API if I want I can even disable cloud functions and no one can use cloud functions but from console you can use function okay from console you'll be able to use it but from sdks you'll not be able to use any disabled service so custom domain nothing new here these are the awesome changes introduced in 0.12 this is all for today's video i can't wait to see what upright has in store for 2022 and i can't wait to see what you as a community will come up with using upright 0.12 and its new features thank you everyone for watching this video see you again in the next episode